Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to build a tiny Wi-Fi enabled fan controller that is powered from USB. At the end of this video we will be able to power a 5 volt or 12 volt fan from USB and control it completely remotely over Wi-Fi. So let's get started. Some of you who have been watching this channel for a while, thank you for that by the way, you might say didn't we already build a fan controller? And you're absolutely right, we did build an open fan controller in one of the previous videos. If you missed it, I'll leave a link to that one in the description. But this project is completely different. Here we want to be able to control a single 5V or 12V fan remotely over Wi-Fi. And we also want to be able to power that fan from USB only. And just to clarify, we do not want to limit ourselves and require USB power delivery. No, we want to be able to use any USB connection. Before we dive into this project, let me explain what is the motivation behind it. I hope I'm not the only one, but in my home I have a few completely passive mini PCs that don't have any fans. I also have a couple of mini PCs that have tiny built-in fans. And I also have other setups like media cabinets, server enclosures, 3D printing enclosures and so on. And I believe that they all could use a fan, at least from time to time. Now, I could simply just power a fan from a DC power supply and have it running 24-7. But that can get loud if you hook up a lot of fans, and in my use case it's completely unnecessary most of the time. For example, if the device that the fan is cooling is already idle or maybe even completely off, there is no need to have that fan running at maximum speed. I also don't want to use another AC outlet just for a fan and have to manage even more cables coming from my power strip or a PDU. So, my solution is to build a tiny Wi-Fi fan controller that is powered over USB. It allows me to power the fan controller directly from the PC that it's cooling. Or alternatively, I can use any USB charger or USB connector that I have available to power it. So let me show you how it all works. I can plug in the OpenFan Micro into any USB connector. It will power up and since I have never powered up this board before, the activity LED is constantly on. This means I should configure the Wi-Fi network first. This is something we need to do only once. I will use my phone for this, but you can also use your PC, laptop, tablet and so on. After that, it will connect to the Wi-Fi network and the activity LED will start to blink. Then I can use my browser to open the web UI where I can see the RPM of the fan and also set the desired fan speed. Pretty cool, but we could do more. Over here you can see an LED that indicates if the board is configured to drive a 12 volt fan or a 5 volt fan. As I mentioned, some of the fans I want to use with OpenFan Micro are 5 volts and some of them are 12 volts. Now there is one very nice feature available. In the web UI we can click on this button and switch between driving a 5 volt fan or a 12 volt fan. So we can use the same board for 5V or 12V fans without requiring any modifications to the board or even touching the board. Another nice feature is that this configuration along with the last fan speed that was set is saved into EEPROM so that fan controller will reapply the correct voltage and the fan speed on the next power up. So if the USB power goes out for whatever reason, OpenFan Micro will return to its last known state on the next power up. Another nice feature is that through web UI we can also rename each individual device. This can be very useful if you have multiple OpenFan Micro devices and want to easily differentiate them. This device name will also be used as MDNS name, which can be very handy because you can use it to resolve device IP address. If that's confusing, let me show you how it works. For example, if my device name is MyOpenFan, I can type MyOpenFan.local in my web browser and it will automatically resolve to the device IP address, which I think is quite handy. Now, I think that this web UI is quite handy and useful, but if you have been watching this channel for a while, you already know that I like to automate things. That's why OpenFan Micro has the same web API as the OpenFan, which we can use to allow third-party scripts or automation to control the fan programmatically. So, for example, with a simple script, my router, which has no built-in fans, 
but has open fan micro attached to it, can now turn on an external fan when it starts to run hot or turn it off when it's not under heavy load. For another example, in my server enclosure and my media cabinet, I have multiple computers and now any one of them can ask for more airflow to help with the cooling or turn the fan off when it's not necessary to reduce the fan noise. You could also have multiple of these fan controllers and orchestrate them remotely to individually control your intake or exhaust fans. You could also link them with your smart home automation and have them turn on or off based on your scene or custom automation. I also have a couple of other use cases like ventilation for my 3D printing enclosure and also fume extraction for my soldering station. And I'm sure that there are many more use cases, so if you think of any that I have missed, let me know down in the comments. Now let's take a look at the hardware and how everything works. The schematic and the board are actually extremely simple. Here is the ESP32 microcontroller that is the brain of our entire board. It handles fan control as well as Wi-Fi and USB communication. Then we have two regulators. This one is stepping down 5 volts from the USB down to 3.3 so it can be used by ESP32. And this one is either passing through the 5 volts from the USB to our fan or stepping up those 5 volts to 12 volts and then passing it to our fan. There are also a couple of other components like USB-C connector for power and also loading the firmware, resettable fuse to prevent the magic smoke from escaping, couple of buttons and LEDs, Wi-Fi chip antenna, some passives and that's pretty much it. So this is a very simple design but I think it does the job, at least for me. Now this video is already too long for such a simple project so I won't go through the firmware because it's also very simple. But same with all of my other projects, both firmware and hardware are available on GitHub if you want to take a peek or contribute. And if you have reached this part of the video, thank you, you're amazing. As you can see, my desk is quite full of upcoming projects, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss future projects and videos. And also, please like and share this video if you liked it, or if you didn't, feel free to hit that dislike button. That's all for today's video, thank you all for watching, my name is Sasha, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!